Sure. So today we're actually going to be talking about pitch. And let's start by defining pitch. Pitch is actually a perceptual quality. Lots of things about voice are, and people don't like really realize that. The actual measurable thing is called frequency. And it's basically oscillation over time. So for the hackners in the audience, that would just mean like, if a string is like vibrating 100 times per second, that would be at like 100 hertz, which is the unit that pitch is measured at. Our vocal folds, if they vibrated 200 times per second, would be at 200 hertz. And like no matter what the instrument is, it's gonna be like the same. So there is like lots of sounds that we might perceive as pitch, but don't actually have pitch. Like for example, if I did a slide like this, if you went for someone like uninitiated with things, they would probably like perceive that as just like a sound going like lower and higher in pitch, when really it doesn't really have any pitch. So let's actually break pitch down into its important components for matching it. So the first is actually, we can break it down into two major parts. The first one is audiation. Wait, is this gonna <laughs> right, left or right? I have no idea. Um, is this right? <laughs> You're doing great so yeah, far. Yeah, it's correct. Um, if you turn and yeah. face it, okay. it can really help. Oh, actually, that's correct. That's a B. I'm gonna delete one. Oh, is there a permanent marker with this? It's on the other end, so if you um, hold it and then press the tip of it, it should delete everything. Oh, okay. But like, I'll just like leave that scribble over there for now. Audi. Audiation. So, audiation is a pretty like huge concept that like basically means the mental process, every mental process that like includes sound. So when we hear a sound and like internalize it, we're basically participating in audiation. When we hear a pitch and we think, oh, that's a high pitch, that's a low pitch, that's audiation. And pitch and sound in general, like music, sound, voices, are, are all really like a language of like consonance, harmonicity, and dissonance, disharmonicity. So for example, if I played like two notes that are like really near each other, how does that sound and how would you describe it? A bit funky, a bit gnarly. True. So, or like very useful descriptors. Anybody else has any descriptors for this <laughs> unpleasant sound? Mm. It Painful. Sounds odd. Eerie. I love that Distressing. Yeah, Distressing, weird. yeah. I'm yeah. Familiar. Yeah. So, when it comes to, like, matching pitches, this is a really, really useful tool for us. Since there is, like, way, like, a lot of, hmm, there is some relationships that are, like, really harmonic. The most, imp like, harmonic of all is matching a pitch one-to-one. -one. So, for example, if I match this pitch right here, mm, with my voice, it sounds like pretty nice, but if I like purposely missed it, mm, it doesn't sound as nice as mm. And there we hit unison, matching a pitch one to one. Now, there, like on the second like most harmonic kind of sound combination comes an octave, which is also another like very common pitfall so um basically this c3 right here c4 they both sound pretty nice together if i did the higher one with my voice it still sounds pretty pleasant with the low note so we should always always be careful that we're like matching a pitch one to one um, and then like afterwards we have like relationships like, you know, the fifth and so on. And they're like 
a little bit like they're starting to get dissonant, but we don't really have to get into them. And when it comes to like, um, like disharmonic noises or disharmonic relationships, actually like the most disharmonic thing is matching a note, but not exactly. So like being a little bit far away from a note. And it doesn't sound quite I try it compared to there we hit the unison. And same thing with like the octave of distance apart. Not quite right. Better. And so what we have here is actually um, a video clip demonstrating this effect. And I want everyone to like pay attention because we're gonna hear a very, very interesting effect happen as you know the two notes are getting close to each other, which is a really, really important tool for us um, if we're like matching the pitch or not, or actually tell us like how close or not close we are to the pitch. These are two notes, one beginning at like uh, A4 and one beginning at A2, coming close. And here we see them like sound like a little bit more harmonic. And now we hit the complete unison and now they're coming apart again almost like an ex or like two friends seeing each other on the road and the clip goes all the way up to like you know the pitch being at like a2 and a4 again and on the second example Pay close attention to the beginning. I'm gonna ask questions about it. And we're about to hit the octave. the beginning of the V kind of shape um, and towards like the middle of the X shape. Is there any like particular effect that you all have heard? It sounds like a wubbing is like the notes are getting closer than not. Yeah, that's right Rachel. So let's play that part again and see if you all can notice. I'm gonna do the V1 because it's easier to notice on it. Now, is that clear to everyone? Mm, you can hear them oscillate together. Yeah, you can hear it kind of kind of sound like an engine yeah, kind of like revving up. I love that actually, but. That is a very, very important tell for us because the closer two pitches or notes are close together, but like they're not exactly matching, the slower the beating is going to be. So let's see how close I can get with my piano and how audible this is going to be. Is this pretty audible? Here, yeah. loud and clear. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. So. Mm, Let me try to like move fair distance away from it just so we can like hear the beating more clearly. Okay. It's not coming out quite right in the mic, but 
Can anyone hear that like fast beating happen with the notes? Sorry. Less so with the recording, less mm. so with the mic. I think there's some filtering. Uh, that's unfortunate. Well, basically, as I said before, the closer it is, the slower it, the beating is going to be, and the further away, the faster the beating is going to be. And we can use this as a kind of like gauge for distance. With the unison, we can like start to hear, okay, which note is like higher than the other note. So I'm going to play two notes right now, and I want you all to tell me which one is higher. Okay, which note is higher? Second First one. or second? Second one. Awesome. Yeah, second one. Now I'm going to ask the second question, and Rachel, you don't answer. I'm sorry. You're put in timeout. <laughs> I'm going to go in the timeout box. Okay, this one is a little bit harder. The is the first one or second one? Higher. First one. Can you repeat that? The first one. First one. Okay, we got first one, first one. First one? Okay, so the first one is indeed higher on that one. Very good job. <laughs> Sitting alone is so sad. <laughs> Sorry, Rachel. You're too good. <laughs> okay, I did this Best. to myself, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play another one. We're gonna play these two. Second. Yeah, sounds like the second one's higher. Two, two. Correct. Awesome job. So <clears throat> pairing that with like the beating, we can sort of like estimate. Okay, am I close? Am I not close? If you don't hear any beating at all, and you know you're not matching the pitch. That just means you're a fair distance away from it. You're not close enough to really like, um, like be in the ballpark. So beating is actually good. It just tells us we're like in the ballpark of the pitch. And so with that, I think this wraps up the section on the rotation. So let's discuss the second like most like important uh, tell in pitch matching, or actually section, not tell. And let me write this out as well. Unison and beating. And on the other side of things, we have prefonitory tuning and biomechanics. Okay, so prefrontal tuning and biomechanics include everything that like happens physically in the voice and on an like, acoustical level, not on a perceptual brain level. So for example, it, or I would like to simplify this term, prefrontal tuning is basically setting our vocal track up for success. Have you ever like tried going up higher in pitch and it just was like so hard, like, uh, and it just like wasn't like coming out right? Yeah. Yeah. Like you had to put extra yeah, so, so there. to get it up higher. Yeah. You kind of hit that ceiling. <laughs> Using force is not always optimal, but there is some like certain pitch and resonance combinations, certain pitch and weight combinations that make certain pitches easier than others. For example, if I were to go low in pitch, so uh, it makes more sense for me to do that with like a bigger size or like a lower length. And 
this is a little bit advanced, but lower pitches actually have more frequencies than higher ones. Um, and because our size or our, our larynx can be like um, higher sometimes, it amplifies very specific band of frequencies. And let me actually demonstrate this. And that band is going to be the same whether we have a little bit of frequencies inside of it or a lot of frequencies inside of it. So based on that alone, lower pitches are going to be like really hard with like um, a high larynx, like ah, and you can start to hear my vocal folds really don't like that. They start to like kind of like break apart. So as a helpful tip and side note for everyone, if you don't want to like have your voice like fall into the lower pitches, a very, very useful tip to, ke uh, to keep is to have a um, higher length versus, you know, something like this. Ah, where we like drop it. Oh, wow, my voice is not cooperating with me, <laughs> but it's fine. So that aside, same thing with like weight, actually not the same thing, but uh, with weight, because of like uh, physiological factors, lower pitches are become like almost impossible without like actually like uh, having a higher weight, unless we like go into like breathiness or like creak kind of sound. So if I stay at like a low weight, ah, and I go low in pitch, my voice starts to break a lot faster uh, or get like, gets inharmonic a lot faster than otherwise. And uh, if I try to carry, and same thing for like voice masculinization, if like I wanted to keep my voice like low in pitch and I was worried about like intonic high, um, I would try to like keep my ear on a very perceptually heavy kind of sound. And then take, and then that would stop me from like being upwards. So when we're trying to match a pitch, we have to ask ourselves, uh, is, are we like matching it? If not, we have to ask ourselves further. Is it a problem with obviation or is it a problem with performatory tuning and biomechanics? So if we can even hear that the pitch is off in the first place, then that means it's not a problem with audition. Unless, you know, it's like one of these tinier parts. But if we like know we're like not on it, but our voice is like not quite like matching what's inside our head, it's more so a problem with this. And, you know, if we're like practicing with someone and we like think we're matching a note, but we're not really matching a note, is a problem with this like whole area. So with all that being said, let me take a sip of water and then move on to our next section. We're a little bit behind on pace actually. So I'll try to do the next section a little bit faster. There we go. And does anybody have any questions so far about what we discussed or in general? No, no questions. Awesome. I'm glad it makes sense. Uh, what, Eve? I have nothing new. Gotcha. I don't have any questions. So, when it comes to matching pitches and other people, we're gonna do a combination of things. First is we're gonna like take a short clip because it's easier to focus on like a short clip of someone's voice. And then we're gonna try our best to like really, really internalize the voice, like play it around in our head, play it around maybe in like our voice in our own head. And then to the best of our ability, 
we're gonna try to like slow it down a little bit, almost like a YouTube video being played at a slower speed. And then to our best of our ability, we're gonna try to like hum along to that effect. Um, so does anybody, would anyone like to volunteer saying a sentence for me? Ash, go ahead. Uh, any particular sentence you want me to say? <laughs> uh, so, internalizing that? Uh, uh, any particular sentence you want me to say? And we can like hear how like there's a very specific like pitch pattern to that as well. Yeah. <laughs> By thinking about the pitch of every syllable. Uh, what are you saying? Oh, it's this a green, yeah. You can hear the pitch changes and all that. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any other sentence? Even you, Rachel, you're out of voice jail. How now, brown cow? <laughs> so, internalizing that and playing it slower. How now, brown cow? And with time, we can be better than this. So, we matched the pitch. Now, now what? There's other ways we can, like, if we're not, like, getting the pitch, actually, there's, like, other things that we can, like, use to help us. So, we can just use the pitch tracker. There's absolutely no shame in using one, because, let's face it, like, most of us here weren't, like, born with, like, perfect pitch, nor do we need it. So, there is some alternative to that, like developing a quasi-perfect pitch. So that would include like remembering sounds from songs that we like heard before. Um, and for example, like I know like FKA Twigs cellophane always starts with like a D note. So in my head, I always like have a reference of like what like a D um, note sounds like. Um, this again, I need to take another sip of water. Okay, actually much better. And we can also like have um, like an understanding of their pitch by. by Noticing how different pitches feel within our own voice, and that's called like uh, proprioception, knowing how things feel within our own body. So, for example, I know my like higher pitches, like D4, always feel a certain way. So let's play a D4 here. Mm, to me, that always feels like it is it's still in like M1 or chest voice, but it's on the higher end of that, and. To give another example, E3 mm -hmm. always feels on like the lower end of my voice, but it's still accessible. So if we like match someone's voice and we like uh, pay attention to those like proprioceptive hints our body is telling us, we can have an understanding to if that person's pitch is high or low. So I know this section was like a little bit. A little bit incoherent towards the start, but so actually, so does anybody have any questions about this? No question. Can you go over the difference between pre-phonatory tuning and biomechanics again, please? Okay. Biomechanics is just the term to like refer to everything uh, physiologically like happening, like for example amount of like vocal fold mass we use is biomechanics but prephonatory tuning is everything that we do in preparation for a pitch so it's starting our sound like light in preparation for like those like higher pitches that we're gonna like reach up above and the two concepts are like very closely related as well does that answer your question awesome thank you so much awesome all right so actually that leaves us like right on time and we're gonna begin our like workshop section.
So who would like to be like the first volunteer um, to do like one-on-one -on -one voice work? I'll do it. And you have? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Ash. Ash, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want me to come up? Yes, please. Yay. Everyone clap. Thank you, thank you. We'll be here all week. Damn. <laughs> so, um, Ash, what do you go by? Uh, Ash. She, her. That. That's you. And what is, like, your vocal skill level? And the current, like, voice problem that you, like, want to work on? Hmm. I think, I don't know the first one, but the second one is keeping everything at a constant rate, so it doesn't sound like the variable, and it sounds more natural. So, consistency and being more natural. Now, those are like very, very big concepts. So, like, when you talk to people, do you have like a lot of fluctuations in your voice? Like, do you... Try to speak like higher in pitch, and then like suddenly, like you like fall down or get heavy, like lose breathiness. Like elaborate more on that. It starts high and then goes low. That's true. So, yeah, keeping a higher pitch is also like one of the, like, the most common problems. And for that, I have two recommendations. Uh, working on artificial pitch floors. And higher pitch habituation. Now, did you ever like hear of artificial pitch floors before? No, this is the first time I've heard about them. Oh, awesome. So artificial pitch floors are like ways we can keep our voice um, from going down a certain pitch. And actually, we discussed the two of them in this like demonstration. The first one is actually uh, keeping uh, higher pitch via like doing a smaller kind of sound. So mimic a few sounds from me here. So we're gonna go like, again, two sounds. Yeah. Okay. Let's try to take it a little bit higher. So. Oh, ah, oh, ah. Very good. And we're only going to be whispering very mm -hmm. gently right now. We're not going not gonna mm -hmm. to be like using our vocal folds. So I'll start it again. And then piggybacking off the second one that we just did, we're going to like jump mm -hmm. off it and like do an even smaller sound. <laughs> you can hear some like distortion happening. That's okay, stick with the sound. Don't let this go. Again. Alright, let's just start. So we're gonna do like this kind of like piggybacking pattern. We're gonna go like mm -hmm. almost like one, two, two, three, three, four. Like <laughs> very good. Yeah, and with that last sound, it's still very good. But mm -hmm. we're gonna like be like very very gentle about it, and we're gonna do like a the most like comfortable pitch that comes along with it and we're gonna start it midway through the air like so go ahead and give it a try yeah i actually really love that Now let's stay like very light and stay like very bright as well. Now, did you ever like work on like resonance before? 
or SAS notification to be more like specific? Uh, I've tried a bit. Uh, I've never had never had anyone see if it's been good or bad. Bad, I guess. Oh, got you. So, with that like sound you just made, is really great. I want us to kind of like climb up it, like uh, climb up in, in pitch, get like really light with it while maintaining that kind of like brighter, uh, smaller size. Mm. And then we're gonna climb back down. And this is really important. As we're climbing back down, we're gonna try to keep as much of the brightness and as much of the lightness as possible. So, mm. ideally, we wanna do this. Ah, ah, the light here. Ah, taking those cool two qualities <laughs> down with us. So, go ahead and try it. <laughs> well, try to start from the higher pitch now. Yeah. It's totally fine, you're not doing anything wrong. So we're gonna... Okay, and now we're gonna do this pattern. Ah, going down in pitch. Okay, so pay attention to that there. Can you hear how like towards the end of that? Ah, our size is changing, just, our resonance. Yeah, it peters off. <laughs> yeah, ah. so we want to hear more of this kind of size. Ah. And you can hear as well, mm. like how the sound is getting like brighter as well. Mm. Also, yeah. um, so keep the brightness. Did I hear a question from the audience? Yeah. My on. Oh, it's totally fine. But yeah. A good like sign for us to know that we're doing this correctly is, you know, we should start to hear um, that our sound get like brighter the closer we are to the bomb, mm. ah, which is the um, the more frequencies effect that's happening. Mm. You know. So, like, so try it again. Uh... One more time, and this time we're gonna start it with like <clears throat> a small E sound, like E. Okay. E. E. Your mic is cutting out a slight bit, unfortunately. Uh, apologies there. E. 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 Oh, very e good. So you're keeping like a lot of the lightness. E Awesome very job. Good. So, mm, thank you very much. Can you hear how, like, you know, as we're getting like lower and lower in pitch, there's a point where it just becomes like really difficult to take those like properties downwards? Yeah, like when I'm at the very end, you can, I can feel like I'm pushing more wind air out that I'm bringing in. Like here. Mm -hmm. e there's an, I have a thing when I try to do brightness, I raise my thumb up <laughs> and lower my thumb mm. to get lower. <laughs> so more changing like the brightness of our sound and our size is a very like complex thing. Like biomechanically, it's very complex. Not like very, not so much perceptually. But, um, you know, it's a motion that, like, includes, like, a lot of, like, moving parts. Like, our larynx is going to up, go up higher. Our pharynx is going to, like, um, get smaller or get, like, bigger, depending on, like, what we want to do. You know, voice muscularization, mm. muscularization <laughs> feminization. Our back of the mouth, our, our pharynx, is also going to, like, um, expand or expand. And to our extent, like, the mouth size is going to change. But... Um, the things happening with the throat more so affect like our like overall like timbre like and basically they have like a much more like heavier effect on the sound like ho 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 that's like all stuff happening with like the throat 
but like changing like the mouth size or like the tongue height okay. is mostly like an aesthetic change. It's not really gonna change our gender. Does that make sense? Mm. Yes. Yes, it is. Very good. So <laughs> you're doing really, really great on weight. Now mm. I, I want to try. Welcome, but I want to try to like get us to um, do a little bit better on like size or resonance. Mm. So we're gonna try to do like a whisper sign, which is like similar to the exercise we just did, except instead of being on steps, we're gonna try to do like a the whole sound on a slide like this. Try not to change like the amount of air you're using so much. Like okay. we don't want to go like like that. Okay. So let me ask you: Do you hear like sound change happening in that? Uh, I I can feel like the going up. Like I guess like I'm trying to put in less air, so. It feels more easier, I guess. <laughs> hmm. So, yeah, the amount of areas not really gonna influence this too much. Mm. So, let's try this instead. We're gonna go for like a yawny kind of sound, like a ho ho ho. <sighs> awesome <sighs> job! And I want us to like sustain this like bigger kind of yoder kind of sound for a bit and then we're gonna like just like count to five on it like oh one two three four five <laughs> i hope that was actually like a yawn let's try to have like a little bit more articulation try again <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to be sorry over. Yeah. Awesome job. So yeah, we're retaining a lot of the talk we were kind of size. And now yeah. we're just gonna go back to our baseline. So we're gonna go like oh and then go to like counting to five again. And then you want to go one, two, three, four, five, like that. Very good, yeah. And go like mm. into a more yawning quality and go back to your baseline again. One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. And now, the same way, like. We like went bigger, we want to kind of like have the change happen. We're gonna go yeah. into a smaller kind of sound. So, I want you to think about this as like a kind of like twangy kind of cat. Like, can you do like an angry cat sound? Like, a sound. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing! That's really, really bright. So, we're gonna go from like our baseline into like a yeah. Like a uh, very tiny kind of cat sound, and then we're gonna take it to counting again. Uh, oh. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Amazing! That's really, really good. Uh, no, so, this is fun. Let's try to do that. Uh, it is it really is fun, but let's try to do yeah. that like exact same change, but we're gonna do it without including pitch. So, mm. someone's gonna be like, oh. cat sound. <laughs> oh. Like that? So much better, yeah. Let's try it again. And this time, I want us to more so go from like that uh, voice kind of sound. So, we're actually gonna like add pitch and then take it voiceless. Like, mm. oh. Oh. really amazing and now we're gonna try to like 
after we like take it to the whistle sound, we're gonna try matching this pitch at the end. So, and this is like a long sequence. So to repeat it, we're gonna go like, oh, Okay, so really important note here, or really important like moment here. Now, go back to the last pitch you made from memory. Oh, geez, what's the pitch? Okay. <laughs> no, if that was the pitch. I'm pretty sure that was the pitch. <laughs> so, is that pitch matching this pitch? <clears throat> My pitch is a bit higher than that, I think. A little lower. It's a little bit like lower. <clears throat> we want to be a little higher. Actually, that one's a bit higher, so. I'm gonna go for the pitch again. more <laughs> I still love that like that's strange but we're going like overshooting obviously there yeah. now <laughs> let's try to simplify again and we're gonna like just yeah. go into like the cat kind of sound and we're gonna jump straight into it into this pitch like wow 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 A bit too high there, it's a little bit like lower. <clears throat> Don't know what that sounds like, Space Odyssey. Okay. <laughs> Still a fair bit higher, so, so we're gonna do a tiny adjustment and yeah. begin with like the very twangy cat sound, and no matter what pitch we start on, we're gonna take it like lower and really yeah. like try to hit that point where it starts to get difficult. Yeah. So, <laughs> go ahead and try it. Very good. Did it start to get difficult there? Yeah, right at the end. <laughs> Run out of breath. Yeah, awesome job. And that was like a very bit higher than the last pitch. So this is the last pitch like we got with the cool lower weight. And this is the pitch we like got from like the artificial pitch floor through like size. Yeah. So combining them together is like um gonna be like the best effect so far. Does mm -hmm. all of this like make sense? Yeah it does. Uh just getting everything the pitch and everything out resonance all sorted together mm -hmm. hell yeah okay well, thank you so. very much you're welcome everybody give it up for us this is really really great let's go Ash. I know. hi so what do you go by and um what is your current vocal level and vocal problem? Everybody give it up for Eve as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Evie, she, her. Um, one of my main issues now is basically keeping everything up there. Like, keeping like my pitch and resonance high as I talk. So it does drop off a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Hmm... You're already speaking at like, uh, bright, like, resonance. In terms of like, weight, you're also speaking at like, uh, more like, heavy kind of sound. So, 
I'm curious, like, what is like your exact like vocal goal? Would do you do you have like a big idea um, or big idea of the parameters? I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm trying to just get my voice to be like a lot lighter than it is. I don't really have specific examples of what I'm going for. Got you. So with you, I think like work on like uh, vocal weights uh, or how much like heaviness we have in our voice is going to be like more, more important because when we're like kind of using like um, a lot of like buzziness, uh, 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 it, it's sort of like um, tends to keep us like down. So let's try some like weight exercises together. I want us to do a kind of like medium airflow is sound. So we're going to take a breath of air, just a normal one. And then we're just going to exhale it on an S like this. Okay. Oh, it sounds so quiet. Yeah. yeah, I think you have like no suppression enabled. You might want to like turn that off. Uh, okay. That, that's... Awesome, that's picking up. Very good. So, we're just going to like, from like that, like medium airflow is sound, we're going to connect it to a pitch. And this is really important. We're not going to like change the amount of like airflow we're using at any point. And we're going to do a slide going upwards in pitch. And... If anybody like here knows, our body is like natural like motion and like tendency for going up higher in pitch is stretching and thinning our vocal folds. So that is like the best and tr most like surefire way to like actually decrease the weight. As long as we're like not like overcompensating with like airflow and doing something like this, ah, uh, or like you know my vocal folds are kind of like being like propped up there for, like um all their heaviness by the extra air. So, the whole slide should be something like this. And then starting at like any comfortable low pitch. So... Go ahead and try it. So... Very good. Now let's compare the beginning and ending sounds. So, we begin here. Uh, or like, uh, to match your vowel as well. And we ended up up here. Uh, so do it again and like do like a contrast between the two sounds. Um, okay. Okay. Those were two high pitch sounds. Try to get like the lower one as well as the higher one again. Okay. So... Mm. Okay, yeah. So, okay. So... Okay, I really like important notice here for everyone as well. So vocal weight is something that like exists all around us. It's like a very like general quality about life. It's what defines the difference between like really like buzzy eight bit noises um, versus like very soft piano sense, or like maybe like the same piano note. Let me play like a lower one. The same piano note played at two different cadences, and the same thing happens within our own voice, and, and it is controlled by like, by several physiological and some acoustical factors. So it's not just the amount of like vocal folds that we have that influences our vocal weight. Other things can like uh, affect that as well. So does anybody here have a guess on what's affecting Evie's vocal weight right now um, that is not the vocal weight? Oh, sorry, not the vocal fold mass. Evie, would you like to do another slide from like a lower pitch to a higher one? 
Okay. Um. Like that. Yeah. Actually, it's two things, but um, I'm fine with like just pointing out like any one of them. Any guesses? Uh, airflow. Mm. Not airflow, actually. But, but airflow is related to vocal weights. It just seems like there might be stutters in it going up. Like it's... I don't know if that's it. Like simmers? <laughs> uh, can you do the slide again, please? Okay, it yeah, sounds pretty consistent in terms of like airflow. Yeah. Oh. Like it's, so it's yeah, pushing. Um, They're trying to push it up more. They put an extra yeah. weight into their voice. I think it's a similar issue I where I hear, like, try and. Yeah. Have to put more. But, I have to put more force into my voice to try and get up to that higher pitch. I guess. Mm -hmm. So, we're gonna touch on that in a second. But the two things affecting Evie's like vocal like weight properties right now are actually breathiness and nasality, which both of them uh, like nasality kind of like dampens the voice like. Uh... I'm speaking with like a very heavy weight right now. Uh, but as soon as I like, add a lot of nasality, uh, it starts to get like a lot more muffled and softer, right? Or maybe like darker is the best part. And also, breathiness as well. Uh, uh, uh. So I'm still using like a heavy amount of vocal fold mass. Which, as we like said earlier, will force us to gravitate towards like the lower pitches, and will make higher pitches like harder for us. Uh... Even it would like you know our weight like kind of decreasing, we're not like fixing like the under like lying like problems. Now I will say that I am hearing you like Evie, kind of like let. Um, a lot of that, like, weight go, like, I don't hear, like, uh... So, would you say, like, that's accurate to your voice? Somewhat, I'd say, yeah. Um... Mm -hmm. So, let's do this slide again, and I really, like, want you to, like, um... Keep in your mind, like, the starting quality, like, the first sound we start with, and our ending sound. Try it again. So like low to high, right? Um. Mm -hmm. so... Okay. When we have like our like vocal folds like really open from breathiness, the higher pitches also become like really hard for us. This is also like included in like prephonatory tuning. Because we're very likely to like overblow the vocal folds if we're using a lot of air. Uh, uh, uh. We're very likely to not have any like actual vocal fold closure. Okay. The vocal folds are not going to be able to like make sound. So let's try and pitch that going upwards another way. We're going to climb up uh, like on any like random like pitch scale upwards. And as we're doing that, we're going to do each step on that with kind of like a glottal sound. Do you know the uh sound in uh oh or water? Water, like the British version, I mean. Like an uh sound. Exactly. Yeah, a glottal tap. Now, I want us to do a glottal tap on a number of different vowels, like uh, e, e, o, u. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you have uh, to do it? Oh, do it now, okay. Uh, A, E, O, U. So, 
can anyone hear how like the closure has already like improved by like a lot and like the lot uh, the breathiness like kind of decreased mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so okay yeah, let's try the slide again like this uh try to follow these pitches Okay. Uh, 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 but let's go like a little bit like lower here. Uh, 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 a little bit higher. Uh, 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 uh. Very nice. And once we're like at like that like higher pitch, we're gonna keep the lightness in our voice and descend uh, lower in pitch with it. like. Uh, until it starts to get like difficult. Uh, Very good. So did it start like getting difficult there? Um, I think that was more so like a breath issue of. Uh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Ooh. So pay attention to that. Like the end of that slide. Ah. Do you hear that like weight increase towards the yeah. end? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we want to stop that from happening and really like be uh, very like aware of our own sound. Ah. Ah. And stopping before it gets like heavy. Okay. Ah. Okay. Much, much better. And... As a general note, um, I think I touched briefly on this before, but once we reach like a certain point, we're either gonna have to increase the amount of vocal weight or like sorry, vocal fold mass that we're using to like get lower in pitch or get into fry, like. Ah. So instead of getting heavier, can we try this version where we like actually like get more so into like fry as we're getting down? Ah. Ah. Awesome job, yeah. And that also will like serve to like people as a like signifier and a clue that oh, like this person is like struggling to hit those like lower pitches. Like, have you ever all like seen an AFAP person? Or the person who like had their uh, vocal tract not not exposed to to this to testosterone, um, go down in pitch and either hit like fry or breathiness. More like a uh, ah kind of sound. Yeah. 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 Mm. So. There's also a question to ask ourselves here. Which quality do we like more? Do you like the fry kind of slide downwards? Do you like the prisoners kind of slide downwards? Or do you like like increasing the, the kind of weight or the vocal fold mass? Uh, I think the most recent one worked best. Um... <laughs> so let's try something different. We're gonna try counting downwards while staying light. Like, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Excuse me. Go ahead and try it. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. This one, you went into breathiness, and did you hear that there was like a slight increase in weight, but not yeah. as much as before? Yeah. Yeah. That's because we didn't quite go as low in pitch. Um, so let's try to give it like another try. We're gonna try to keep like the sound like very perceptually soft. So try it again. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Oh, excuse me oh. a second. I don't think my... Oh, it's not nine, charging. Ten, Hold on. Nine. Okay, there oh. we go. So, that was a really great slide, by the way. I still heard it. Um, Thank you. Let's do it, like, one more time. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome job. So, basically, to summarize, pay attention to how much, like, um, like weight there is in your voice. Pay attention to, like, if there is, like, an underlying, like, rumbliness. Like, ask yourself, am I being breathy? And is there, like, an underlying, like, rumbliness to that? Like, uh, 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 in my voice? Um, or is it just, like, breathy and still, like, kind of soft underneath? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. And try to, like, do more of these slides where you keep the weight, uh, like, low while, like, Keeping the closure like a little bit like less breathy, okay? Okay. Awesome. One, Do you have any like last oh. questions? Uh, nothing that I can think of now. Um. Okay. Awesome. Well, everybody, give it up for okay. Evie. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Clap, 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 clap. Mm, <laughs> okay, we're already in time by like a little bit, but I hope that was okay. You're like being the already in time. Uh, and I really thank you all for listening. But before we like wrap up completely, does anybody have any questions in general or about what we talked about today? Where can no. I find out more about your lessons? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the question. Um, well, hello, I'm Jana. I teach on Sanguistics and also my own server, Boston Studios. Um, if I could, I would post a link to my server. Um, but I also do, I also do like public lessons and that are chatable on Sanguistics. And if you want to book lessons with me, feel free to DM me on Discord. Um, I should have the Discord ID in my profile about now. Oh, hold on one second. There we go. So yeah, um, this is how you reach me. I also do like free like five minute consultations or five to 20 minutes consultations where we like go over your voice, um, address like your voice goals, and, and like draw like a roadmap to get to them and yeah that's about it does anybody have any like other questions uh yeah i've got a turbo nerd question um so Ooh, you talked a little bit of, a little bit about harmonics um if, my professors never explained this very well so i'm i'm curious if if uh you could help me out so is it that uh, resonance makes your voice sound higher because it makes the higher harmonics louder? Yeah, actually, that's exactly what it is. Um, all what, like, resonance is doing is kind of, like, amplifying those, like, different, like, bands of frequencies. Like, if I had this pitch going on, uh, and I took it through, like, big size and small size, uh, now like the lower frequencies are like louder and we hear the sounds is like bassier and the higher frequencies are also like a little bit quieter. Uh, now the higher frequencies are like um louder and like the lower ones are like quieter. Oh yeah, awesome. Man, I wish my like seventy year old professor didn't uh a vocal example like that in front of us all. <laughs> <laughs> if only my vocal professor was very engaged in Voice practice and voice pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've all been like really lovely. I think that about concludes it. Um, yeah, thank you all for listening.
Thank you. <laughs>